My name is Jane York, and I had the honor of being the student veteran speaker at this past uh, Veterans Day ceremony, the first female student veteran speaker in Stony Brook's history, as a matter of fact. I'm about to graduate from my Master of Social Work program at the School of Social Welfare, where I specialized in integrated health. That's physical, psychological, and social well-being and I am a proud Navy veteran, having served five years of active duty from 2012 to 2017 as a Master at Arms in Washington State. And for those of you who don't speak Navy, uh, a Master at Arms is the equivalent of a military police officer or a guard sentry. When I was on active duty in the Navy, I was first stationed at Marine Corps Security Force Battalion Bangor, where our mission was to provide physical security for the nuclear assets on base. Now, if you know anything about Marines, you know that they love to run. A one to two mile motivational run in temperate conditions, dressed appropriately for the weather, is not motivating enough for a Marine. Uh, no, for the true Marine Corps physical training experience, you must be in full uniform, complete with 20 pounds of gear and steel-toed boots. And only now are you ready for your five mile run uphill. I will never forget one of our joint PT sessions. We were about three miles into one of these motivational marine marathons, blistering in the summer heat. And as we made our way up yet another ridge, I started to fall out from exhaustion. As a Navy sailor, and not only a Navy sailor, but a female Navy sailor, trying to hold her own and command respect in this male-dominated marine battalion, this was unthinkably bad. Running through that heat felt like running through quicksand, though. And as I slowed down, I felt a Marine's hand on my back. And at the same time, I heard him say, nope, nope, no, you, you are not stopping. And that Marine kept his hand on my back, and he pushed me up the hill until I was able to recover. Thinking about this day and speaking to all of you, I reflected back on my military career. There was a rainy day in Brooklyn when I'd just been let go from my restaurant job and I couldn't bring myself to apply for another one. Nothing left to lose, I thought, as I opened the door to the Navy recruiting office. A hush fell over the room and everyone got up to greet me. They listened to my story about feeling lost, needing something new, different, structured, a way to get my life on track. This didn't feel like a great job interview so far. Sensing my embarrassment, a recruiter said to me, you know, Jane, not everyone joins the military because their life is going well. If you need a reset button, this is it. In that Navy recruitment office, I felt a hand push me up the hill. So I enlisted and off I went to boot camp in Great Lakes and then to Master at Arms Technical School in Texas. The Navy was offering automatic advancement to petty officer to the highest performing graduate of every class. While my shipmates were enjoying margaritas on the San Antonio River Walk, I was pouring over homemade flashcards for hours at a time, alone in my barracks room. The vying for top grad was competitive, and I knew I would need perfect grades to get that promotion. The day before our graduation ceremony, I was called into my commander's office to receive the good news. It was a close race, but I had been named top graduate and would be offered an automatic promotion to petty officer upon arrival at my next command. Elated, I readily accepted the promotion and boarded a plane to Washington State and Naval Base Kitsap. At the airport, I met my sponsor, who helped me settle in and adjust to the sprawling base. Every day for several months, she checked in on me and made sure I was okay. Another hand on my back, another push up the hill. Our mission was to maintain and safeguard nuclear missiles. I was promoted to Petty Officer Second Class and immediately began to supervise a group of 35 sailors and Marines in one of the base's highest stress commands. When we were inside the limited area, on duty in a highly sensitive sector of the base, we were on heightened alert at all times. We worked long hours in often extreme weather conditions and stress. It was typical for me to see sailors who were exhausted, depressed, and physically ill from the demands of the job. As a supervisor, I had an office with a couch, and sailors would routinely come to visit me, put down their rifle and helmet, and sit on my couch and ask for guidance on dealing with the stresses of work and maintaining personal lives far from home. 
they called me Mama York, I, I guess because I was the ripe old age of 26 at the time. But um, really though, I think it was because like their real mothers, they knew that I cared for them unconditionally. I was fiercely protective of my sailors and they could sense that there was no air of judgment in my office. I think my gift to them was to help them self-heal through our conversations. Now it was my turn to push them up the hill in what turned out to be my very first experience with social work, though I didn't know that's what it was at the time. My next adventure was getting married and having our daughter, Annabelle, who turns three years old this month. One month into my pregnancy, I was reassigned from nuclear weapons security to base law enforcement. Within two weeks of coming back after my maternity leave, I was promoted to supervisor in a job I barely knew, needing to make judgment calls in the moment and develop other sailors on the job. One night, we conducted a welfare check in a, for a troubled family on the base. And as we entered the home, me and a group of military police officers, my concern was for these two small children that we encountered and the trauma that our presence might cause them. In that moment, I decided that I would need to be Mama York, not Patrolman York, to these two small children. My approach worked. And before long, they were tripping over each other, trying to show me their coloring books and their toys. I knelt down so that I could be on their level, and I complimented their drawings. I quietly and patiently explained to the mother uh, what was happening with the other patrol officers and why they were walking around her house. Responding to those calls to service were some of the most rewarding experiences of my military career. And it's why I'm here now to help people make hard decisions easier and to show them a path toward achieving their potential. As soon as I started my Masters of Social Work program here at Stony Brook, I became an intern at the Office of Veterans Affairs. The transition from active duty back to civilian is hard enough, but to transition from active duty to civilian to student can seem almost insurmountable to so many veterans. Military culture is rigid, but if you're someone like me who thrives in structured environments, you'll do very well. Life in academia, by contrast, can feel like free-falling to those of us who have served. Leaving the familiarity and security of the Navy felt like becoming untethered from the mothership. Freedom did not feel freeing. It felt terrifying, and I struggled to adjust. Craving connection to those who had felt as I did, I thought back on my days on active duty and the sponsors I had had at all of my commands. I decided to try and recreate the sponsorship experience here at Stony Brook and together with the Office of Veterans Affairs, developed a program to identify senior class veterans who were doing well. We trained them to be sponsors of incoming student veterans. The program was a big success and continues to this day. More hands on backs, more pushes up the hill. And now as I enter my final stretch of my academic program, I am in the Navy Reserves and I serve one weekend a month at Navy Operational Support Center in Farmingdale and two weeks a year in Naples, Italy. It's a tough job, I know, but someone's got to do it. My most important job, of course, is not being a petty officer in the Navy or an MSW graduate of Stony Brook. It's being Annabelle's mom. She's the mission. And needless to say, I have my hand on her back as she climbs up every hill. Being a mom is social work, but social work is everyone's work. The Marine pushing me to go on, the patrol officer encouraging a mother to overcome her hard times, a student veteran sponsoring another student vet to push through Stony Brook. We're all social workers, nudging each other on to be better. Thank you.